is an international organisation with um, over 10,000 members worldwide and chapters in different countries all over the world. The aims and objectives are to support and promote female professionals within the audiovisual sector um, in, in all areas, uh, so technical, on screen, behind the camera, generally trying to get um, an even playing field. You don't just have to sit back and wait for something to change, you can actually engender change. Um, and so I was thrilled to uh, meet Rachel and hear about this organisation because I thought, thought for a while that I, I was talking to myself, so it's great to know I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest truth about the film business is that it is absolutely geared and has evolved to be geared to a very male energy. But then the, the nice thing about directing, I think, as a woman, is that I think without meaning to, you just have a different way of working with images and with the world. That's, that's such a, an amazing power that film has, and I think it's really, really important that you know, women's experiences and stories can be reflected in the same way, and there is, there's a, definite, there is a definite lack of that. You know, there is a kind of real problem there. And, you know, there's been, and, and, I've, and I think people are speaking out about it a lot more in the last couple of years, which I think is terrific, because it's just that's such an important starting point. You know? Personally speaking, a lot of the films that I would have been very impressed by and, and drawn to over the last couple of years have happened to be made by women, with some very notable <coughs> exceptions. Um, I suppose it all depends on the kind of cinema that you're drawn to, um, but I think there are some tremendous women forging terrific careers, particularly in France, some in America and Canada. Um, I think it's... Also, there are a few now in England who are, you know, there's, there's people like Joanna Hogg, obviously as Andrea Arnold, uh, Lynn Ramsey, um, who at least now, I think, are being able to sustain a little bit of a career. We've seen in Irish society, which I can only speak about really w with this degree, uh, and you recognise these things, that over the last 20, 30 years, women have had to struggle for educational, third level educational rights, we've had to struggle to get into certain professions, we've had to struggle for reproductive rights. So we have a long, long history of women being kept in a particular place and not having a public voice, but being very much associated with the private. Now film is a part of public discourse, so straight away it's a bit of a leap for us. The reality is that things don't change without someone getting off their ass and working for that change. Yeah, well one of the things, one of the kind of important things that we want to do with women in film and television is to get, um, to get quantitative data to, to find out the numbers of women who are working in the um, working in the industry, so it seems that the room is full of them, which is fantastic. There was a report done recently yes. about the fact that, some, I think, if I recall correctly, 7% of all drama in England, in television, is directed by women. The number of film school graduates who are coming out it is absolutely equal, and yet there's only 7% of women who end up forging a career in, in broadcast drama. I don't know whether you're familiar with the, the, the BFI three ticks that's come on board in the last couple of days. There are always ways that funding bodies can facilitate change, but you have to have the political will to do that. And that is what the BFI have done by saying that pro um, projects coming in will not be favourably looked upon for production unless they do ABC or they show that they're bringing in, on board ethnic people, uh, ethnic voices, um, women's voices, non-heterosexual voices on board, and that that will add to the strength of their project being funded. So it is possible in that way to have producers go, okay, let's look again at who we've got, and we can bring them on board. So I don't accept the view that there's nothing that the Irish Film Board can do. But it's interesting because, you know, the film board system is so different. I mean, in America, there's nobody who can say yes <laughs> to yeah. your film. And in a way, it's it's liberating, or it, ha it has felt like that for my career. I mean, you can try to go through the studio system, but that is like, you just know as a young person that like, you're, you're only, the only window into the studio system is once you're already famous, so there's actually no, there's like, you don't get, you don't just get there by walking in a door with a great script, it's, it's, so really what ends up happening is that because there's not a film board, because there's not funding for low budget, you know, unknown filmmakers, you are the one who actually has to say yes to yourself. You're that's certainly something that yeah. seems to be yeah. really resonating with yeah. people mm -hmm. kind of going, I'm not going to wait to ask permission. Mm -hmm. This is the story that I want to tell. Yeah. I'm going to mm -hmm. tell it if you'll give me a fiver. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it for you. <laughs> I suppose as somebody who grew up in, in the film business, my father's a director, my, my grandfather was an actor, I have 
two very different feelings about it. Because it was just part of the fabric of my life, and because I happened to have quite a feminist dad, it was never an issue for me that a woman couldn't be a film director. The flip side, however, is that I can remember very vividly um, being expert, you know, being around film such as being around that world as quite a young girl, and looking at a lot of the women, perhaps in middle age or late middle age, who had made their careers in film, who, because of the nature of the industry, had had to sacrifice a great deal of other things in life. And I can remember saying to my dad, I don't necessarily want to end up without family or without it. You know, that it seemed quite stark even to me at 11 or 12. I am in contact with the, the, the head of funding in Sweden, and I thought, can I just read you this quote? Our gender equality ambition gives strength to Swedish film, not the other way around. And I think that's kind of an interesting perspective, yeah. the notion that yeah. it's their strength they're looking at, yeah. not a form of weakness. Oh, you'll be inundated with rubbish scripts, or yeah. you'll have writers who are useless come yeah. getting yeah. money. Yeah. You know, we, we don't have to look at it that way. There are other ways to look at it. The people with whom I've built my career have all been tenacious female producers with whom I work over and over again. And I think that was something that also came out of the Channel 4 discussion, is that most of the women, certainly on, on my side of the camera, um, who are making a career as directors, have been given their breaks by like-minded female producers who ally with them, with some very notable exceptions, obviously, because there are some brilliant men out there. Um, but that seemed to be the, the trend of it, and that's certainly been my, my experience. Also, it's because women's lives demand a slightly different rhythm, demand that occasionally you are not on location for six months, and that you need, you know, so you have to earn your bread and butter some other way. So looking at a CV that perhaps is very broad in terms of skills, but is not the sort of the general, you know, going straight up the ladder from fair city to casualty to suddenly get down to Abbey, you know, very, very few women, certainly in television, are getting that kind of career experience so far. What I think is great also, though, is that, you know, we're up against 100 years or more, one with the Lumiere brothers, 1896, 100 and something years, of an industry in which women have only really played a significant role in the last 20 or 30. Um, so that's just the nature of it. It's going to take a bit of time. It's still not that usual that women are doing this as a full-time career. <laughs> All over Europe, this conversation is going on right now. And I've met women, even here at the Flower Ridge, in the last couple of days, who have said about today, yeah. they've gone, oh God, we were talking about this 30 years ago. Is there never going to be an end to the conversation? Yeah. So I kind of feel myself paraphrasing that phrase, and I know I'm getting it wrong, but you know that the one that says, there's nothing so powerful as an idea whose time has come. I feel that this idea is, that this time has come. If people would please join Women's Film Television <laughs> and, you know, let's try and do something about it this time.